I'm going to invite Stacy now. Stacy is going to share with us a um, personal connection. Uh, she spent, her partner is Bridget Haddad. Bridget is Arab Israeli. She spent the day, Friday, Friday with her and the weekend with her and her family. And she's going to share some of the stories um, from this wonderful meeting there. Hi, um, I'm Stacy. Um, I teach at Temple Beth Avoda. Um, as Rachel said, I teach um, at Temple Beth Avoda. I teach um, the three-year-old, young three-year-olds there. Um, I spent Shabbat in Haifa with, with Bridget. Um, Bridget teaches um, at a school with students who have um, hearing, um, who have he um, difficult hearing. Um, they're either deaf or hard of hearing. And um, they also, a lot of their students are actually being prepared for cochlear implants. And um, it was just amazing just going and visiting her school and just watching how they prepare their students. Um, that was just also a piece of what I saw with Bridget. What I found amazing about Bridget is she is um, a Christian Arab. Um, in her school, they have, because of the type of students they, they have, their students are, um, they keep, either they're in a Hebrew-speaking class or in a Arab-speaking class because of the type of students. Um, after we visited her school, she took me around Haifa. And what I noticed very quickly, she is probably one of the most welcoming, most hospitable people I've ever met. Um, she, she just, she took me around Haifa. She explained everything, what every, every little piece of Haifa, everything around. Um, she told me she got up at six o'clock in the morning <laughs> to, to bake a soup for us for lunch and she, um, she couldn't get it ready in time, so she went and brought it over to a friend's house to bring it over to a friend's house to let the soup cook on the stove at a, at a friend's house. And then we went and picked it up and brought it over and met um, another um, teacher that was staying with us at her house. Um, and we had lunch there. She, because she is not Jewish, we did not celebrate the Shabbat there with her. <laughs> But she wanted to give us some taste of her family. So she invited her three sons and one of her sons who also just recently um, got married two months ago, invited them all over so we could meet her family as well. Um, so when Sharon Dadon, who works at um, also at another preschool, came and um, from after visiting her school, we all had lunch. And it was just an amazing experience sitting down with this family. Um, one of her sons is a paramedic. And he was a, his, as they say, his bus is, what's what they call his, his ambulance, was actually the first on scene um, during the fires last year on Mount Carmel. And he told us his amazing story of how he heard on the radio in Israel, and I don't know if you, if, if you know this, but in Israel, you're on one frequency. So the entire state, whereas here, your frequency is whatever city you are. So in Israel, you're on one frequency. So the entire state heard what was happening. Um, he immediately, his, his group went straight up to the mountain and um, he sat there and told us everything in his own words, um, exactly everything what happened step by step. Um, how they prepared, you know, getting cots, getting blankets, getting water, um, just, w and then waiting and waiting and nothing happened. Uh, Bridget had said after he finished his story, Bridget had said that it was the first time he had told his story without becoming emotional. After this, and, um, her, Bridget's husband, um, and we also we met with another um, 
with another teacher, another Israeli teacher, um, who came and brought Amy with us, along with us, and we met, and we went up to, um, up to the mountain to visit the memorial, which was just, was just recently finished. And I actually have, just, I have a few pictures. Um, so this is actually, this is Bridget, and this is the memorial that was just recently, just recently finished, and it has all the names of everybody who passed away in the fire. And this hit me a little, a little um, as well. My husband is a police officer here in Newton, so to hear that, you know, and to be here and hear that there, here there are where these guards going up to, you know, to help save and help save these prisoners that actually kind of touched me personally as well as a wife of a police officer, never knowing when I could get that call as well and get that knock on the door in the middle of the night that actually, that touched me personally as well. Um, and this was next to the memorial off to the side. This was, um, I thought this was very, they had a burnt, this was very symbolic. They had a burnt tree and on the bottom was just new, new growth. I just felt that that was just very symbolic. Um, and down here was just this um, memorial just people had left, just like we do here. And you can see just the devastation. Um, and here we are, just the group of us. Um, teachers from Israel, teachers from Boston, together. Um, Bridget and her family, they continued throughout the weekend, um, just showering us with knowledge of Haifa. Um, we joked throughout the weekend on how Bridget's husband, Andrew, um, needs to add a, he actually, well, let me just back up a bit. They own a guest house, um, right? Um, you walk out of their guest house and you look up the street and there's the Baha'i Gardens. And they, so they're in the German colony, which is a beautiful, beautiful place. And um, we joke the whole weekend that he adds, it needs to add a new dimension to his business and he needs to become a tour guide. <laughs> um, you know, he just, he is so knowledgeable and he took us, he and Bridget took us around everywhere. Um, we went to Akko. Not only did we get to shop and walk around and look around, we got a history lesson along with that. And um, he's, they're just a lovely, lovely family. Um, reflecting back at all of this, I, fig I wanted to f come up with a way on how could I thank Bridget? How could I thank this family for being so welcoming to me? Because that was one thing people, when I came home, people kept saying to me, what was it? You know, what was, the, what was the, your highlight of your trip? What was the best thing? What was your favorite thing that you did? And as I wrote a letter to our families. And as I was starting to write the, my letter to my families back at, at Beth Avoda, I really started thinking, you know what? I really think the biggest piece was my connections. And it was a really, it was a surprise that the, my, the, what surprised me was I took back from all of this was my connections, not just with Bridget and her family, was with, with everybody, with the teachers here, with, with the teachers that I've met in, in Israel. I think that is what I'm gonna take back with me the most, were the connections um, that I made professionally and personally. Um, they are, these are connections that I hope that will, will continue to, to grow. Um, so, I wanted to do something for Bridget and her family. Um, and I also had a, a nice connection. I have a, there's another teacher at, at Beth Avoda who had, was not able to go, who um, her partner school is the Nassau School. Um, and it's a school for students with special needs on the autism spectrum. Um, and the director there, Tali, we have a nice, I had a lovely connection with her as well. So, we decided that the best way to thank them for their hospitality and 
was we are now collecting since Tu Bishvat is coming up soon. We're going to be collecting. Um, each classroom is in in the school is going to be collecting um, for trees, in honor of each of each of our two partner schools, and in honor of um, Bridget's son. So I have. This is just one of the small. We just made our own, um, just so that the students and the families will have some type of personal connection for them versus the JNF um, ones. I just figured I'll just make made our own. Um, so we have some pictures and some pictures of here. I'll have some with I have some made with the memorial. But I just brought one for you all to see. So. <laughs> So I should say Bo Tov. If I'm communicating with Haifa, I didn't even know it. Except I just communicated with Haifa this morning. And as you can imagine, when I start off talking to my Haifa partners in the morning, I usually say Bo Tov, Saharayim Tov, because we're in the morning, they're in the afternoon. And uh, that's the way it goes in Boston Haifa. Um, so I'm really pleased to be here and to see all of you here this morning. Um, I noticed down the hall that there were rabbinical students starting their day off with yoga. And uh, it occurred to me that wouldn't that be a wonderful way for all of us to start off our days um, at our workplaces, little pitch for yoga. Um, so I am I'm really pleased to be here. I, I just want to say a few words about sort of the bigger picture, the Boston Haifa picture, and um, the role of the CJP in shaping this picture. Um, I'm very proud to be associated with this program. I've had this position for uh, a little over three years. And um, in that course of time, I think my contacts and networks in Israel and here in the Boston community have just multiplied by hundreds of, of wonderful people doing really important work for the community, both in professional capacities and in lay and volunteer capacities. So something that you should just know about the bigger picture of the, of the CJP Boston Haifa Connection is it involves so many people. Uh, you're part of it. Um, every single program we have um, involves wonderful, you know, professionals and coordinators, uh, the, the uh, children and adults who are the beneficiaries of the programs, their families who indirectly benefit, um, the, you know, numbers of volunteers who are on our committees. We have six committees um, doing work in Boston and in Haifa, they're joint committees. Um, so that involves over, you know, 100, 150 volunteers just right off the bat there. So it really is um, an extraordinary um, initiative that we have here in Boston, the relationship between Boston and Haifa. So just a few other things I want to say about it, um, the, just a few facts. Uh, this is a relationship that's existed for over 20, about 23 years. It began um, informally uh, with a few business people from Boston uh, who had connections in Haifa way back when in the late 1980s. They wanted to um, do some kind of an initiative to support the um, r new Russian immigrants who were coming into Israel. I think because they happened to have a, a Haifa connection, they started working in Haifa with partners there. From, from that point on, it has flourished in so many different directions. I mean, at that point, there was no thought that, wow, we were going to be doing school-to-school -school connections and educator connections, and, but it's just evolved over the years in so many different um, directions. I mean, Jewish education and identity is a huge direction. You're all a part of that. Um, we have uh, work that we do with vulnerable populations in the city of Haifa. Um, some of you may have heard of the Shiluvim program, an extraordinary multi-million dollar initiative that supports the Ethiopian Israelis in Haifa and has become so popular and so successful that it actually has attracted more Ethiopians to settle in Haifa, which, you know, creates additional challenges in terms of funding and, but you want to have that kind of success when you do this kind of work. Um, there are other, uh, I know Don Wortlieb is in the room, has been a long time um, Haifa, Boston Haifa volunteer. We've done so many good projects in the realm of social services um, that have been replicated throughout Israel. Um, now um, Don has been very active in a new such initiative that's targeting a particularly vulnerable neighborhood in Haifa that contains um, a mixed population, including Arab Israelis, Russians, veteran Israelis. Um, we're focused on early um, 
actually early childhood. Um, the cohort of the age group is uh, zero to six, and we're focusing really on parenting, parenting skills and prevention. Um, they often use the expression in Israel, youth at risk of being at risk. These are not necessarily children who are yet defined at risk, but there is the potential for that. So, you know, all told, um, there is just a huge amount of initiatives going on. I want to just mention one final one, and then I'll let you get underway. Um, we're very excited over the past three years. I don't know how many of you are familiar with our relatively new Hatikva IDF officers mission. Have any of you met any of those officers coming to different schools and synagogues? So um, the past two years, we've brought a group of uh, a dozen officers from, I see you're nodding. What temp, were you, did you meet them somewhere? Oh, excellent, excellent. So for the, so even though the work we do is mutual and has been mutual, we, you know, we focus, the, the focus tends to be on Haifa, um, but the, about three years ago our Haifa partners uh, basically came to us with this idea of like how can we be more impactful in Boston for you guys. And uh, that we, we ha they hatched this idea of bringing these IDF um, officers over who, who all are either from Haifa or serve in Haifa. And um, they've, um, we, uh, for the past two years, we've brought them to um, literally, you know, each year is about 50 different venues in the community, different synagogues, different schools, non-Jewish venues. Um, they've met with not members of the American military. I know this year there'll be a Temple of Israel um, at one point. Um, th so just keep your eyes open for the, the Hatikva um, army officers. So just finally, I just want to conclude by, you know, sort of having an even bigger picture, which is that I, I think that the work we're doing in Boston Haifa and you all being a part of it is, it's really, um, we're actually part of history, you know, we're making history. Because we are, you know, we're in a very interesting period in terms of defining um, diaspora Israel relations. I don't have to tell all of you that, but it, it's just, it's a very fluid situation. There's a lot of change going on. There, there's no question that, that um, we're trying to find our way, these two communities. Um, and, um, and, and all of you, all of us who are working in, um, in any way connected to what we're doing in Boston Haifa, we're actually, we're, we're actually d uh, engaging in a creative process because we're making change happen. And um, I don't think anyone really you know, knows you know, how it's all gonna come out in the end, but I think you know, just to keep in mind that you know, the little pieces that we all do, you know, in our own spheres are, are really part of a much bigger picture in terms of uh, this very uh, interesting time that we're in and a significant time, I think. So I'm thrilled to be here and I'm just going to listen and, and hear about all your wonderful experiences and your um, uh, conclusions that you've drawn from those experiences. So thank you very much. Okay. And um, to continue with this, uh, talk about, we don't know where it's going to go, and being inspired. The photo that you see up here was actually taken in Zichon Yaakov, and the gardens of the Baron Rothschild, and we learn how he had a vision and a dream to invest and to create Israel in some sense, and he brought lots of money and power of people and put it, and we learn about his life there. And while I was sitting there, I was thinking, you know, we can do so much, and I think being in Israel and seeing how it started from pretty much nothing and to see where it is today, it was very inspiring for us, and even though sometimes we have difficulties along the way, everything is doable. If we, if we have the vision, if we have the power of people, we can do everything. And this is where we're starting, and this is um, together with our partners in Israel. So Boston Haifa Connection, uh, as you heard, started many years ago, but the Boston Haifa Early Childhood Connection started in 2001. And uh, if you want to learn more about the history, how it, t took, how it started and the impact that it had, we put together this um, document together last year that's really collecting many, many stories for participants both in Israel and in Haifa that um, emphasizing the impact it um, this connection made on them, on their community, the children, and the families that they are working with. So we have copies here, so if you really want to get to dive a little bit into the history of the connection and the impact and be even more inspired, so please um, take a copy later on. Since 2001, it's impacted hundreds, 
of teachers in both sides and thousands of family. The, something to keep in mind when we're working with early childhood, we're, we're, when we're working with teachers, they're going back to their classrooms and they're working with so many children, with their colleagues, with their teachers, but this is the best time to work with parents. This is the time the parents want to be involved. This is the, the time the parents are coming to programs. They want to learn. So this is the best time to start uh, in bringing Israel or bringing any Jewish content or any different content. But this is the best time to really work with the family. So we are very fortunate that we can see the impact. Uh, some of our Shagirot, they just returned from Israel. They already wrote beautiful newsletter and shared with the parents. They shared it with me and I'm going to try to share it more with the communities. And, and, and this is the, so it's a, it's a larger um, impact. The Boston High Early Childhood Connection, we have a couple of goals, but some of the main goals are to promote personal and, per, and, um, and professional connection. We want to have this connection with our partners in Haifa, so when we listen to the news, we know about our friends that live there. It's not just, ah, it's Israel. We have this personal connection, professional connection. We are preschool teachers here, working with preschool teachers there. We're doing some wonderful things here. They're doing some wonderful things there. We all have challenges and we can enrich one another. So the professional connection, it's a wonderful start to work together and, and um, enrich one another. And strengthening the, the Jewish identity, for us, for our students, for our teachers, um, even though not all of us are Jewish, but it's still, we're teaching in Jewish setting. We, some of our partners in Israel are Arab Israelis, and they are also located in um, preschools that work with Arab kids, but they still, they are living in the Jewish society, so it's important for them to have a better understanding. So through this program, they also learn more about the challenges of being Jewish. And in some things where we have something in common with them, because we are a minority in the United States, they are a minority in Israel. What does it mean to be a minority in Israel? What does it mean to be a minority in a Christian country? So we have some things in common with them, so it's, it's very interesting and sometimes to see the support that they get in Israel from the government that we don't really have here. So it, it's, it's and another um, enriching piece. Since 2009, after the closing of BGE, uh, Hebrew College is actually um, directing and, and uh, the Boston Haifa Early Childhood Connection. And when we were asked to do that, we said, okay, let's study the past. So we put together and we sat with many people to really understand what was, what was, um, what was done before, the impact, what's working, what's not. It, they did an amazing job over the 10, 10 years. When I was reading this document, I was so inspired to really think that I'm gonna continue and be part of this amazing work that's being done in the community. And we sat together with this subcommittee with a couple of directors and trying to see the vision for the next 10 years or the next five years, or where we want to go, what's working, what's not, where we're moving. So we were um, sitting together and we, the budget was cut and the, it, it came to us and the, the change of the environment and we said, okay, we need to think it through, be creative and what can we do? So we decided really to focus on a leadership track. If we work on focus on a small group of educators, investing in them, in lots of learning and connection and giving them the skill how to go back to their communities later on and, and uh, share it, may, maybe they're going to make a bigger impact even though we're dealing with smaller funding. We can't take a group of 25 teachers anymore. A 25 teacher from Israel can't come to us anymore, but how we can make the most out of it. So we um, developed this three-year cycle that the first year, which was last year, we formed a group of uh, ambassadors. We call them leadership ambassadors, Shagirot in Hebrew. Um, we formed a group here and a group in Israel. And um, they were selected actually, because I work with the directors here in Boston and I came to them and I said, please identify somebody on your staff that you think can be a leader in your community. Somebody that has interest in Israel, have interest in sharing with others, want to grow, want to volunteer their time and energy, and they want to be part of it. So, and I think they successfully selected amazing woman that I had the for, that I'm so fortunate to work with uh, for the past year and a half. We try to make the connection work as much as we can with video conferences, sending packages, emails, Skype, phone, Facebook, everywhere, every way that we can we're trying to make this connection constantly. Sometimes it works 
better, sometimes it doesn't, but we try. We invested in learning. Last year we offered a class, Israel 101, that Susie is here. <laughs> she developed it and taught it for us. It was a five-week session, uh, ten hours of learning that people took about history, land, uh, waves of immigration, understanding the people uh, of Israel. And then we had a conference Israel, um, about the Israel connection to bring Israel in any way people are teaching. If they're t teaching Parashat Shavua, the Torah portion, how it's connected to Israel. Teaching the holidays, Hanukkah, how do you connect it to Israel. All of these ways that we can help them to bring Israel and to see that Israel is connected in so many ways to what we're already doing in our preschools. We gave them educational resources. Some of them we received from JNF, from Israeli Office of Tourism, from the consulate, from, we bought some things as part of our budget because we really wanted to equip those uh, shagrirot with as many materials, something that would make it easier for them to go back to their community and do their job as leaders. And second year, which was this year, we're continuing with everything that we did uh, last year. Not, we don't have the class Israel 101, and we did a couple of sessions in our conference. Year two is, was the Israel seminar that we're going to share with you a little bit of this, the impact. And hopefully next year, a group of the, our partners from Haifa are going to come here, and they're going to impact our community by staying in our schools and teaching here and studying together with us. So this is the three-year cycle that, again, the idea was that after three years working together, studying, investing time and energy. The schools are investing so much time because every time the, the Shagrirot are coming here for a meeting, they need to find subs for them, substitute teachers. It's money when they are not there. If they are sending packages, many times the school is paying for these packages and the books and the CDs and other things that they are sending. It's all of this is money and it's time and effort. So we need to keep it, so this is a community-wide uh, investment. So these are just flyers for the Israel 101 course and the um, conference that we put together. So the Israel seminar took place from December 25th until January 3rd. And yeah, this is a picture in Metzada. Everybody's smiling. We had a fabulous time. It was really a wonderful time for bonding and getting together, touching the land, touching the history, and learning um, in making, strengthening our cohort, our group here together, and all the time sharing ideas. How can I bring it to my classroom? I can, how can I share it with my teachers? How can I bring it to my colleagues here in the school? It was constantly. I shared it with the Shagirot that didn't come with us. They were with us all the time. We were buying for them material. We were thinking about them. We took, to, we took thousands of pictures that we're going to put in one CD, uh, divide them by different categories so they can have it to their classroom to enrich their teachings. We had a couple of goals to our seminar. One of them is to deepen the knowledge and understanding of Israel and gain first-hand experience. Some of the participants, it was their first time in Israel. For others, maybe the second time. Um, and uh, we had a couple of veterans that were uh, invested in this from pretty much the beginning. We went to strengthen the personal and professional connection with our partners and develop leadership skills. So we constantly were talking, how do you present to your community? How you come back and what do you do as the next step? How do you take it farther? And to do that, we explore the land to learn. This is a beautiful panoramic view of um, Jerusalem. We were looking at studying geography, really understanding where everything is. So when we come back to our communities, we can work with the kids, we can work with the parents. Some of them already put a map and they highlight where we went. So it's becoming much more natural in the classroom. They're coming and immediately Israel is there. Um, the Dead Sea, you know, for us it was a surprising, shocking day in the Dead Sea. It was wavy. It was dangerous to go in. Everything was crystals outside. After 10 minutes that we couldn't go in, I said to them, let's go on the bus. We're going to the north. They have a private beach where you can sit in the mud. We all went there. We changed it after 10 minutes being there. And we changed it and we went and we had the amazing experience of floating, playing with mud. But they had the experience of see seeing the Dead Sea with the crystals. Some of them collected salt and they're going to bring it to the kids. Because when we were there, I said, I can't have this group of teachers going back and sharing the kids this experience of the Dead Sea. We're all saying, you know, you're floating and it's nice and it's calm. 
it was awful. <laughs> So, so we, we made a change immediately and we went to have the, the experience that I, they, they're going to share the two experiences with the family and kids, but I wanted them to have this classic experience of, I think the 364 days a year, it's not this experience. It was one of the, I never saw the Dead Sea windy. It was, it was really, it was different, very, very different. So again, exploring the landscape, exploring biblical text. Most of our school teaching um, on Friday or during the week, Parashat Shavua and Torah, and, and they're teaching Torah to the kids. To make the connection, the Torah, it, it's not just the book that we are seeing or the scroll that we explore with our rabbi on Friday. It's there. We are standing where Avraham was. We are standing in Ir David where David was um, uh, living. We're, we're spending, we, we, we took the, the um, with the bus from the airport, it was during Hanukkah. We were traveling through Modi'in and Maccabin and saw all of the Hanukkiyot and to know this is where it took place. Now all of these teachers are coming back to their school and they're going to come and their experience about Hanukkah in Israel, it's totally different. And how they're going to bring Torah study every week to their classroom is different. Practicing some Hebrew. Some of us know more Hebrew than others, but it was a great opportunity to practice it a little bit, thinking of way how we can bring it more to the classroom in the future. Hanukkah. So Hanukkah, yeah. Hanukkah in Israel. Rachel's going to talk us. Uh, Rachel's going to share with us Hanukkah in Israel, because I'm just giving you a, a teasing of a taste of Israel. When we selected the date to travel to Israel, I was looking. Uh, in the past, it used to be that February was the time that this group uh, uh, traveled, but I saw that this year, winter break and Hanukkah are at the same time. And I said, I really want them to understand what does it mean to be in a Jewish state during a Jewish holiday. And it was everywhere. As I said, we were driving through Modi'in to see the Sufganiyot everywhere. The Hanukkiyot, we lighted Hanukkiyot in Nachlaot neighborhood with the family there and seeing them in um, boxes outside uh, for Pirsum Anes. There are programs for families all over Jerusalem. Jerusalem was packed packed with families, they have a special program that they got a map and they could go from one place to the other for different activities, different <coughs> museum, music. It was, yeah. even at the mall, we went to the mall. And, and the reason, you know, when somebody asked me, why are you taking them to the mall? I, and I said, I want them to see what does it mean to be a Jew in a Jewish state? What does it mean that you don't really need to, you don't need to work hard to teach the kids that Hanukkah is coming, your children? It's everywhere. It's everywhere. And you know what? When I came back, we drove through, I live in Concord, we saw the Christmas trees, and I said, like, we are on a different planet. <laughs> and this is what we need to deal with. And it was totally, totally two different words, worlds. And I was so happy that this group and then, you know, the rest of us can try even to have a taste. What does it mean to be Jew in a Jewish land? To be a majority, to be in a place that the holidays are being celebrated outside, everywhere. And I think that this is something very, very unique, very powerful, that for me growing up in Israel, it was obvious, but every time that I speak to any educator, I said, you need to spend a year. You need to spend Israel Memorial Day in Israel. You need to spend Yom Ha'atzmaut. You need to spend Hanukkah. You need to, you need to really get the feeling, what does it mean to be privileged to be in a place that it's being celebrated um, outside. So we explored history in some places. We met people. We had the um, fortune to meet this Ethiopian. I'm sorry that the, the quality of the picture is not good. Adina, she made Aliyah from Ethiopia walking through Sudan. She opened her house to us. She cooked for us. She shared her amazing story of walking, losing many people on the way, how the Mossad actually helped them to come. She didn't know it was the Mossad, but later on she was educated. She was actually working in a preschool for many, many years to see how she connected. Her Hebrew is beautiful. To hear her talking, the way she's pronouncing it was just wonderful. She's raising, ch raising children, some of them in the military right now. It was very inspiring, again, to touch the people. So we come back to our preschools, we can come and say, yeah, there are Ethiopian Jews, there are, there, are, there are Arab partners that we are working with. We have one of our partners, two of our partners made Aliyah from Armenia. Many of us didn't know that people still make an Aliyah from Armenia. What does it mean? So all of these things, meeting the people, 
We saw pe people in the middle of the street, and I'm not kidding. These soldiers in the middle of the, uh, of the Rova, I asked them to come and take picture with us because everybody wanted a picture with soldiers. They were so sweet. The policeman on the right, he stopped and chatted with us. We all took picture with his uh, car because many of us, when we're teaching transportation, we can bring what kind of cars and trucks they use in Israel. So this is an easy way to come and say, ah, this is the, the truck that they're using there, this is the ambulance in Israel. This is a very easy way to bring Israel and fuse it in every way we do. Now, you know, even looking at the policemen, what the policemen there wear, what the policemen here wear. And these are the things that's very easy for the kids to connect to. Food. So this is the fabulous food that you made for us. And, f and we try different kind of food because many people, many teachers think that food is falafel. Israel eat falafel breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Like people in the United States eat hot dog or hamburger three times a day, right? No. So we tried, we went to the market and I got different fruit and we tried different food to really enrich the experience. So next time when we're teaching something in our school, it's not again going to be falafel. Israel eat more than falafel, and there's many wonderful things. So this is again, to have this experience and be there and see it, now they're gonna change this, uh, the way people look at it. Um, examining our symbols, it was during Hanukkah, many school look at, they call the menorah for Hanukkiah, they call it menorah, now they're calling the Hanukkah menorah. But to look at the differences between the menorah that was in the Knesset, and the Hanukkiah, and this was the perfect timing during Hanukkah to explore them and looking at all of the symbols, what we, why, why is it our symbols, what are we doing? We took many pictures, so we're gonna do another unit just about the menorah with this group and the, the Hanukkiah in the future. So there is lots of potential in that. Shema Israel it was on the um, menorah in the Knesset. We even connected with families. That was, uh, we st we, as, as a little kids, we had to try a playground, and this is a well-known playground in Jerusalem. And um, Joanna and Amy and, and uh, Sharon, they met with one of their families um, at the playground, exploring modern art, because Israel, it's not just about the history, it's not just the Bible. There are still people there now exploring and cre creating and working on new art and they have new vision. So we want also to know these modern artists, what they're doing now, that to make sure that everybody in our preschool know that Israel is not just an archeological place. We don't need to go there and just ride a camel because Israel is not all of them are riding camels every day. Okay, so, so and this is what's very important to come and think about Israelis they're creating art, we're creating art. How is their art look like? What our art looks like? And uh, Amy is going to share a little bit what she's doing with her kids about Israeli artists and art being inspired and what she learned in Israel. Reenacting the birth of the state of Israel. That was one of our moving, moving day. Our guide was actually a young Russian immigrant. And she shared with us, we, we listened to Ben Gurion and the story, what happened there, and it was very inspiring for us. And then, you know, everybody started being in tears when she said, this is my, now my home, this is your home, and you're all welcome. This is the place for the Jewish people. So it was, it was I was in, <laughs> crying, and all of us were like looking, and it, it was very, very moving to be there. Uh, many of uh, many learn about it in the class with Susie, but to be in this place and really understand why it's in this just little modest, tiny place it took place, um, and this is where Israel was declared and the birth of Israel. So it was very very inspiring. Again, it's um, making you know the connection to our history. This is Independence Hall where the picture was taken. After all of this exploring and learning and examining, it was finally time to go to Haifa. And all of this was made like in four days. And, and there are many, many more things that we did. The personal and professional connection. Coming to Haifa in the hotel room, waited for us baskets with goodies, picture from the kids, welcome sign. First of all, we, everybody knew that they're welcome. But it's not just welcomed by partners. We felt like really family. You know, this is what family do. You know, they came early that day to put these signs in the hotel. They were waiting for us. The basket was made by different preschools. The kids made these photos, these pictures. They created this basket. They brought it there. They knew what's going on. So even to have this connection from the first steps in Haifa. 
We had lots of fun, really bonding. This was, we had one night that we, we didn't plan a party, but the Israelis said, we need to have a party, we need to bond. And there was just, if you just look at the faces of everybody, yeah. I didn't put more than that, but the laugh, the, that's it, no dancing. I didn't put the dancing. I didn't include the dancing and some of the games, but it was fabulous bonding and really get to know one another. And this was after Shabbat that they were all staying uh, with their partners and their family, after spending Friday morning in the preschools with their partners, spending Shabbat with their families, and most of them with their extended families. We had with grandparents, with grandchildren, with children, um, and we're going to hear about it also. And you can see there are lots of excitement, lots of fun, and this is the real connection. What we tried to do last year with the video conferences, with the emails and all of that, it was building to this. But this was what really tied, this was the really strong glue that really connected us. And for me to see it, it was just really, I made many new friendships for myself. And, I'm, and I have many friends, I grew up in Israel, I have family in Israel, but I'm going to stay friends for, with many of these people. Wonderful, wonderful people that really care. They all came there also from their own personal time. It's not a vacation or days off or anything. They made food, they opened their homes, they invest a lot in their families that uh, hosted us. So it was um, wonderful. And then the Ghanim, so we're talking about the professional piece. We did some learning with them and we're going to look at a little bit uh, about that. But we also learned even just visiting their school. It was during Hanukkah. This was the work of Rembrandt and looking at light in Rembrandt work. They're, this is what they brought when they were teaching Hanukkah. So this is also open our eyes. How can you teach Hanukkah, not just about the miracle of the oil and the dreidel and the story, but what Hanukkah is about? Before we actually traveled to Israel, one of our video conferences, we studied texts from the book of the Maccabees together, and we grasped with the question, what is Hanukkah is about? So this was a continuation of what we already did. We started this conversation here, we took it there, and we continue with what we learned. So, so just an idea like this, it's the festival of light, Chag Aurim. let's talk about light in other things. So this is in the work of Rembrandt and this is the preschoolers. This is what they are exposing them to. Um, animals that love the darkness. Light, darkness, what Hanukkah is about and how we can bring it in many different ways. Um, you know, building block and, and shadows in science. What are the th different things that bring light to our world? I know that some of us as a teacher, we were, we were doing some of these things, but we felt that we, sometimes we don't do enough. So we were very inspired. And to think about how we can bring those things to our class again and again and again. One of the things that inspired us around science, and I shared it with some of you, uh, the new Nobel Prize winner, Dan Schechtman, he, he won the 2011 Nobel Prize for Chemistry. He is from the Technion. And he is now working with our partners, Shifra and Anna, to develop curriculum for preschool to enrich, to bring science to the early childhood classrooms. And one of the things that when I, when I came back and I said, like, we really need to promote more and more excellence in our school. I'm actually trying to make connection with him through our partners and maybe to be able to bring him here, maybe to, pry, to try to connect as part of the Boston Haifa MIT Technion to find some inspiring uh, professors here that will help us to bring more science to the classroom, more art to the classroom. As I said, like the Baron Rothschild in Zichron, there is, there is a lot to do. And there's lots of inspiring things that we can move on and we can take and uh, look about um, how to bring it in the future. Um, bonding with the children, that was a wonderful, wonderful time to sit with the kids. And when we're talking about, again, the personal connection, it's just, just me and a teacher. It's me with the kids, me with the parents. Some of us participated and there was a birthday celebration. The parents were there. So the parents know about it. The kids know about it. Um, again, we're si singing with the kids, Sharon playing with them, um, studying together. This is actually Aran Dubovi. He is the, um, the, the superintendent of Haifa and he gave us beautiful gift from the mayor of Haifa, this beautiful medal of Haifa and um, a nice book about Haifa that I'm going to share with the group and I'm going to display it here at Hebrew College for everybody to see. And some new facts about Haifa, it's all um, from the mayor of Haifa. So they definitely appreciate what we're doing. He came there in the evening. We had this wonderful evening of studying about bringing literature to the classrooms and he was part of that. 
almost done. And this is, we were in Zichon Yaakov, again, studying together different topics that interest us, and then bonding, even in the first Aliyah Museum, even playing dress up. You know, kids like to dress up, we like to dress up. And really looking at the first Aliyah and how to look at the history from the beginning where there was pretty much nothing and where they are today and what it took uh, together. It was excellent. And then in the end, we spent some time and we're almost done with this uh, presentation, really reflecting, reflecting on the connection and making future land uh, plans. Because one of the strongest pieces that we have with Boston Haifa, we're not working by ourselves. We have partners. We want to see what will enrich them. We want to share with them what will enrich us how we can work together so both community becomes stronger as educators and as people-to-people um, -people to, um, relationship between us. Um, and Naomi is going to share a little bit about the impact on them in a little while. But it was very, very important meeting. Um, many of them, uh, what, something that came out of it, that they wanted to meet more on a regular basis, like we do already. So this week, I think, or next week, they're having a meeting, all of the group. Again, it's, it's not their professional time or anything. This is their own personal time. But they want to connect more. Because one of the things that we see in Israel, many of the preschools are not part of a large preschool with a couple of classrooms. They are isolated. So for them, this is a great opportunity to work together and feel that they are part of a larger group. And to be continue, uh, you're going to learn who is this little doobie because Sh Sharon is going to do a little presentation about him uh, in a little while. I'm delighted to welcome all of you here to Hebrew College and to be inspired by the work that's being done in the field of early childhood education, in all that connected to bringing Israel to our classroom, but also really developing excellence in our schools and working with our parents and the kids. We have, um, as I shared earlier with the group that traveled with me to Israel, Originally, this meeting was supposed to be about them sharing with their partners here in Boston. And then while we were in Israel, I said, you know, this is so inspiring. What's going on here that we need to share it with more people? So it grew and grew, and more people are actually going to come and live in the middle because other people had some other engagements. So we're going to have them coming in and out. I want to... Um, we have a couple of special guests that I asked to come here today. First of all, Ruth Kaplan. She's the director of Boston Haifa Connection. That without Ruth, I think we wouldn't be here today. So, so this is it's very, very important, or the program that she's uh, directing. I also want to welcome the Israeli consul, Ron Ronit Nudelman. She's sitting with us. Um, Jory Sp uh, Sapir, she's the director of public diplomacy at the Israeli consulate. And we have a couple of, uh, we have Susie Rodenstein, the teaching for us, and uh, she's a faculty at Hebrew College. We have a couple of directors, uh, Michael Shire, Rabbi, uh, Dr. Michael Shire is the Dean of the School of Education. And you're going to hear from some of us. So really, thank you for coming here to be, hopefully be inspired by our work. Um, I want to invite Sharon Corris from the Jewish Preschool of Lexington. Doobie, we're famous. Look at you. <laughs> First of all, I want to thank the teachers I traveled with for humoring me. <laughs> By the end of the trip, I think they broke out in hives <laughs> when, when I said, where's Doobie? We've got to take a picture of Doobie with this. But um, Doobie was actually a last minute decision. He was a thought, I made, uh, a thought I had that I approached my children at school with the day I was leaving for Israel. Uh, we had spent a lot of time reading Sammy Spider Goes to Israel and talking about how Sammy jumped in the plane and went off with Joshua to Israel. And um, we were looking, I have a whole collection of Beanie Babies, and the children really thought that Doobie would be an appropriate traveler. And it, it wound up being a great traveler. Doobie has his own passport. <laughs> That was from a scrapbooking store. Um, so this is the first pass. The, fir the in initial goal was to de generate memories. The second goal is going to be to develop a real book that we can use as educators to help children make that connection to the land of Israel. And I think the biggest thing I, I took away as I'm beginning, I'm talking about taking it away, 
is that I think for many of us in Jewish schools, one of those first defining moments about what we're doing there is that moment when a three-year-old or a four-year-old looks around and looks at you and says, so we're all Jewish here? <laughs> that, that concept, that moment of identity and of Kalal Yisrael that we start with the other children in the classroom, it's not just who we have in our family, then it goes into our, our school and our community. And this is my goal of helping children understand that that extends beyond our borders as well. So um, Doobie Goes to Israel started with, first of all, Doobie has a message. And he says, Doobie and his traveling partner, Sharon Kors, would like to thank the following for their support in making this amazing trip possible. Of course, CJP, who founded this and gave us all this opportunity, the Early Child Institute at Hebrew College that I've been a part of for 12 years, and um, the Jewish Preschool of Lexington, where I have also been a privilege to be teaching for 12 years. So I'm not going to go through every page. Um, this first starts to connect us to Israel. Doobie's going on an airplane. Many of us have children who are doing this. Um, through the Israel 101 course, I had a better understanding of the connection between ancient Israel and Israel today. Here's Doobie overlooking the city of Jerusalem at night. And here he is at the Kotel. And to see that, you know, every year we build blocks and we give the kids little pieces of paper for them to write their notes on and stick them in the blocks. And for me to come back and show the children that, yes, there are actually tiny bits of paper from who knows where stuck in the walls was really stunning. Um, the connection, again, to ancient Israel, as as Raquel said, standing on the land where, where Avraham was and looking, overlooking the city of Jerusalem and looking at, at the fact that even though there are all these buildings here, if you look in between and you see what the land looks like, and, and that land is so stark, um, and again, that Israel was brought up from nothing. Diversity, um, one Israel, many, many, many faces, many Jewish faces. Um, this is the family we spend Hanukkah with. This is Adina who, who made Aliyah from Ethiopia. Um, there are many different kinds of Jews in Israel and that was stunning to see. And then also the other people, these are children in the classroom I am partnered with. She has a very, very large Ethiopian um, population in her school. But as you can tell, he, they're kids. You can't, there are no name tags that I'm from where. And that was striking in all of the preschools. Doobie really enjoyed Hanukkah <laughs> in Israel. I think he had too many sufganyot. Um, and this was the family we spent Hanukkah with in Israel had rebuilt the window outside of their home so that it extended and there were nine Hanukkiot in that window. And we were all invited to help light among with other friends of theirs that they had over that night. And this is a box outside, an oil Hanukkiah that all through, all through Jerusalem we saw. Modern Israel, we Thank you, Rachel, for going to the soldiers and giving them doobie. <laughs> um, and also our, our police officer friend. And doobie would like the children to understand that, that there are a lot of people in Israel we need to thank and support for taking care of Israel for all of us. Doobie also enjoyed the food in Israel and the many different kinds of food from the shooks to what we experienced in the restaurants. Uh, it was a very different experience. Again, the starkness of the desert. And desert isn't always just rolling beautiful sand like we see in the Ten Commandments with Charlton Heston in his sandals. 
it's rock, it's mountains, it's really, really barren and devastatingly empty. And this week it hit me when I was doing the parasha with my children that when Moshe left Egypt and schlepped out to, to um, run away, he had a tough time. He really did. It was very barren. Of course, even though Israel is not exclusively or entirely or even mostly about camels, we did have an opportunity to do a camel ride. Doobie enjoyed himself a whole lot more than I did. <laughs> and it was also fun as an educator to see that the patterning toys we all have in our classrooms with little bears and little elephants and little people that connect together, they had a set with camels which I now am going to have to have. Water, irrigation, I know the first, um, the first overriding theme that Boston and Haifa as educators that we had together many years ago was water. And it was a wonderful opportunity to share port cities and water. Um, and there is water, a lot of water, um, but it was also interesting to be able to show the children the irrigation systems where things grow and that it's not so easy to grow things in Israel but yet this is how this is what they've been able to do with all that amazing technology and of course my brain is thinking how can I get set up hoses from the sink over to our little garden center in the classroom so that we're doing more with irrigation Yes. No, uh, these are all from my camera. Okay. And you're going to get access to them. Yeah, little camera, just a regular, regular camera. This is the gun. This is a couple of different schools. And the thing about the schools is that children are children. I did not put in the picture of the two little boys fighting over a book. Maybe I will at one point. Kids are kids. But the children were with their blocks and were sitting in groups and were at free play and were outside having fun, um, just like our children. Doobie did have a wonderful Shabbat in the classroom. Here's their Ima and Abba Shabbat. And they had Bamba as a Shabbat treat for all the children. Bamba is a, an Israeli peanut butter flavored junk food. It's kind of like what? It's not, you're right, you're right, it's good, it's good. Yeah, it's a good snack.